A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Romare Paulson. It's a very beautiful Friday morning, the 24th of May, 2024. And today, we'll set you in for the weekend. Now, we have a lot in store for you this morning. One of the topics we'll be taking is, I will keep contesting for presidency, and that has been said by Atiku. Also, we'll be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll also be taking some top trending stories stories as well as our quote and my name is Brume Paulson. So without further ado, let's get to the quote of the day. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And that is by May West. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Now, I know that a lot of millennials and Gen Zs are good with this quote. They, in fact, they've made it into an acronym that says YOLO, you only live once. Um, but then we can see a different side of this quote as well. In as much as you only live once, if you do it right, <laughs> once is enough. So you have to think of how to live your best life. Now, don't say you only live once and you know live a very rough life, but just do it right. I know it's the weekend. A lot of us have different plans. We have events to attend. Um, make sure that you're spending time with the people that you love. Make sure that you put in those goals, dreams, and aspirations. Make sure that everything that you need to have that better and fulfilled life is being put in place and so of course you have to do it right when you do it right once is enough now nobody's promised you know multiple lives right I, I think it's cats cats are known to have about nine lives but human beings we have just one life and what you do with just that one life matters a lot it's your shot at having the best life for yourself for the people around you and then you want to be able to say I was here I lived I was happy I spent the best moments with the people that I love and I lived a fulfilled life so it is important that we live a fulfilled life now with that being said you only lived once you only live once like Mae West has said she was an American actress and songwriter so you only live once but if you do it right if you do everything that is supposed to be done once is enough. You don't need another one. Most times is when we have a lot of regrets and say, I wish I could have done this better or I wish I took on those chances, all those opportunities that passed me. I wish I can go back um, and do it again. But now what May West is telling you this morning is you're not going to get another chance at life. Maybe not. We don't know about reincarnation, but this life that you have today, how are you making the best? out of it if you do it right once is enough you're not going to have regrets saying i need to come back a lot of times we in fact you know there's a saying that the graveyard is the wealthiest place because you know it, it's a place filled with so many talents so many resources that were never really harnessed a lot of people die with their talents and so what this quote also says is you know what do everything in your part to ensure that you exude um, grace, you, 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 you rid yourself of all of those talents, you try everything, you explore, you know, to the best of your abilities, to the best of your capabilities. Do not keep things inside of you and say, I'm not sure I can try that. Um, I don't think I'm the best man for the job. No, just explore. Make sure that you're, you know, turning all the stones unturned and then once you do it right, once you live your life the right way, once is enough. So this morning, we're trying to tell you, it's the weekend, you only live once, but make sure that you're doing it right. And when you do it right, once is enough. All right, that's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over, to, we'll move over to our top trending stories. And this one says, only the best and brightest migrant graduates UK announced. Um, so migrant graduates who enter the UK through the graduate route will soon be mandated to sit annual English tests with the hope of attracting only the best and brightest to this UK. This is a part of the changes being made to the scheme which allows foreign students two-year post-study stay after graduation. 
under the new policy set for cabinet approval, universities and colleges with high dropout rates will also lose the ability to recruit international students and recruiting agencies who mislead foreign students into leaving their degrees for low paying jobs will be targeted. Government sources say the revised graduate route scheme is a part of a larger effort to tighten immigration rules. I cannot agree more. I mean, a lot of people move over, and it's not just Africans, you know, people all over the world, Asians, um, people just move to the UK saying they want to study. And sometimes they start to take other jobs. I understand the fact that a lot of well, most times, you need to be able to support yourself even while studying. You need to be able to pay for your fees. Um, you need to be able to pay for your rent and, you know, all of the amenities that you need. So you have to work. And I know that as a student, you are granted about 20 hours per week to work, right? So some people would shelve that, you know, the reason why they were there in the first place and start to look for other jobs just because they want to make ends meet and now in a way to in a bid to tighten up their immigration rules um the uk is saying you know what we're only going to um recruit only the best and brightest students so after taking the course um we're only going to take out the people that we know they can work for our system and you know it's just having to like sieve out the people that they don't need now what does that tell you know our students make sure that you are the best and you are the brightest make sure that you're doing everything possible to um go there study learn everything that you can and if you want to get a job which is a um, two-year post-study um leave to remain then good for you if you want to come back that's fine but don't go there and decide to say you know what um, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to work now for people who recruit their students um, into the UK. Well, you might just not be able to recruit anymore if you're not getting the best and the brightest. So in a way, it, 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 this, this law kind of like cuts across, you know, from the students to the recruiting agencies to the universities as well. So for you to be able to say we're well, taking on the students, you need to be sure that, you know, the IQ is quite high enough and then it works for, you know, the immigration laws as well that they've put on your university. So this is everybody coming together, working in tandem to ensure that, you know, the UK immigration is better. And I totally understand. But where I'm going to take this to right now is what are we doing with our own educational system in Nigeria? The reason why a lot of people, you know, move abroad to study is because they feel like they have more resources there. Um, they can learn better, you know, you're not hearing of strike actions that happen with our Nigerian universities, especially um, the government-owned universities. You're not hearing of, you know, laboratories not having enough equipment. You know, th th you have an environment that is enabling your growth. You have an environment that is enabling your better ed education. And so what are we doing with our own educational system if we start to put, you know, all of these things in place? We would not have our kids running abroad. Now, over um, a few days ago, there was the story that broke about Seaside University having to, you know, send back some students home because they could not pay their fees. And this was one of the things we spoke about. The reason why those students went there in the first place is probably because we do not have a good educational system. If we had a quality educational system, they probably would not even have to go there in the first place. And I, I use, you know, University of Ibadan, for instance, it was one of the prestigious universities in Africa where different people come here into Nigeria to study. Now, we don't see our universities being the best in Africa. People are even going to Benin Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, um, People are going to Togo, Ghana to study. Imagine Nigeria that was the giant of Africa. Now becomes almost like a shadow of itself in the educational sector. So what are we doing? All of the investment, all of the infrastructure, all of the resources that we need um, to have a better educational system needs to be put in place. Because if you're saying that you want to have quality citizens, then how else are you supposed to do that? And they say our kids are the leaders of tomorrow. So if our kids are the leaders of tomorrow, how are you training those leaders to come take those roles that they are going to be, you know, wielding tomorrow? You have to train them now. So it is important that we start to look at our educational system and see what we can do to galvanize um, the right 
resources, the right human capital, the right, um, you know, um, infrastructure, everything to be able to have a good educational system for our kids. And I mean, who knows the UK anymore? Because that's one of one of the ways, you know, they, they generate revenue. And we can also have our educational system to be one of our ways to generate revenue. We cannot be looking at crude oil all the time. Agriculture, we don't even think about that so much. Um, mining, you know, all of the mineral resources, we don't look at that so much anymore. So it's important that we're looking at other means, you know, just to have a better educational system, better revenue for our country, and everyone will be happy. All right, uh, another top trending story. This one says lawmakers support reversion to old Nigerian national anthem. Lawmakers have opined that the current national anthem, Arise O Compatriots, which replaced Nigeria We Healthy in 1978, is a product of military rule and should be discarded to foster unity, peace, and prosperity. This support followed um, closed door, a closed-door debate on a bill sponsored by the leader of the Senate, Okwayemi Bamidele. The bill has been referred to the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to report back to the House in two weeks. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives, the bill um, to revert to the old national anthem, Nigeria We Hail Thee, was passed through the first, second and third reading at the lower chamber within minutes. All right, um, I mean, we have our rise of compatriots, we have Nigeria, we hail the, what we're supposed to be talking about? What, I feel like the lawmakers, I don't know if I'm gonna call it, you know, some form of misplaced priority because why are we talking about the national, the national anthem? And, you know, the national anthem has a significance, obviously, to every Nigerian. It has a significance to everyone who, who sings that national anthem passionately, you know, who, who is very, um, you know, patriotic about their country. But then, are we supposed to be fighting over which national anthem? I mean, the one in 1978 that was, you know, being moved away, Nigeria, we held it, has had its time. Where we are right now, we are currently using Arise of Compatriots, and that is fine. If we're saying we want to change it into something else, that's okay as well. But we cannot be fixated on the national anthem when we have so many other things to, you know, well, we have so many other things to just look at. We have to look at, you know, quality education. We have to look at infrastructure. We have to look at, you know, security. We have to look at so many things. So why are we being fixated on that? Now, we have a little track um, about this, and let's just take that. My respected colleagues, this bill seeks to make provision for Nigeria to revert to its old national anthem that will promote better symbol for unity, peace, and prosperity compared to the current one. The new anthem, Nigeria, the new anthem, if passed, Nigeria will hold thee, will yet again inspire in us the zeal to build a fully integrated and indivisible nation where all citizens will live in unity and harmony. Finally, I implore you all, my distinguished colleagues, to support the expeditious passage of this bill, as it is in line with the renewed reorientation of our collective values and national conscientization efforts of the current administration. Now, this talks about fostering peace and prosperity. I don't think the national anthem is supposed to be what will foster peace and pr prosperity. I know that people who are passionate about Nigeria, people who are patriotic, would definitely foster peace and prosperity. So it's about the people. It is not about the national anthem. There are so many things, like I said, we can be talking about today. There's so many reforms, so many policies that we expect, you know, the lawmakers should be to be looking at, not talking about reverting from the current national anthem to the old one. Why are we going back to the old one? It's just a question. I think the lawmakers, they really, really need to um, understand that where Nigerians are, we really do not, we're not bothered about such things. We're bothered about our safety, the safety of our kids. 
We're bothered about the quality education that we want for our children. We're bothered about putting food on our tables. We're bothered about having to pay our rent. We're bothered about having to fuel our cars, about transportation, about so many other things, about infrastructure, right? So healthcare, can we talk about you know, good healthcare that we really do not have in Nigeria? So talking about the national anthem, it's something that shouldn't even be brought up in the first place. How about making those reforms that would better our lives, that would help the standard of living for Nigerians? The NLC and the TUC, they're still talking about, you know, some form of negotiations for the minimum wage. No one is really saying anything about that. Well, they've had to have, you know, some form of conversations whereby they went to 48,000 Naira and then 54,000 Naira. And you're wondering, why is the government not putting so much priority to the lives of a Nigerians and then having to speak about a national anthem and reverting to the old one? I just think it's, a play, it's just some form of misplaced priority. And the lawmakers, they need to start to make better reforms for a Nigerians and something that we can all be happy about. But if you ask me, the national anthem, that is a no-go area. All right, to our final top trending story, this one says the Petroleum Industry Act is already yielding dividends, and that is said by Okobiri as he boasts. On Thursday, 23rd May 2024, at the ministerial briefing marking the one-year anniversary of President Tinubu's administration, a Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum, Heineken Lokobiri boasted of the $16.6 billion deepwater offshore assets attracted through enactment of the Petroleum Industry Act. According to Lokobiri, Nigeria's friendly policies in the last one year had restored investors' confidence in the country's oil and gas industry. Investor confidence was said to have been previously affected by conflicts among partners, divestment issues, inconsistent policies, insecurity, and bureaucratic bottlenecks. Now, Lokobiri proudly reports of increased oil production from 1.1 to approximately 1.7 million barrels per day, inclusive of condensate. The current administration also prides itself in its downstream efforts and policy of constant and continued engagement with critical industry stakeholders to ensure smooth and effective distribution of petroleum products across the nation. Lokobiri referenced, um, referenced the lack of fuel queues during 2023 Christmas season as a notable achievement attributed to the concerted efforts of stakeholders, especially the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, NNPCL, and the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, on the administration as a whole, the minister said, President Tinubu is wholly committed to ensuring that we bring down the cost of living and doing business in Nigeria. We put more money into the pockets of Nigerians, attract more local and foreign investment, and transform our nation's infrastructure. And we will not pause or relent until we have delivered truly renewed hope to all Nigerians, in quotes. <laughs> well, if he says, you know, the petroleum industry is already yielding dividends, then I want to know, is that on paper or is that, you know, a little bit realistic? Because I know as of two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was still, scarce, there was still some form of scarcity of the petroleum product. So um, if it's yielding dividends, maybe we would need more transparency on that and more accountability to say, OK, yes, this is where we are. Because talking about, you know, the NMPCL, it has even been said by the World Bank that the NMPCL is not transparent about how much they make, about, the, you know, everything that is being done in their coffers. So I'm just wondering, um, taking the Christmas season and saying because there wasn't a lot of queues, um, how is that really an achievement? I mean, it's great because there's nobody that would definitely want to start sourcing for this product and they don't have it. And having to see, um, you know, fuel stations selling these products for, you know, a very high amount. But as of, if I'm being realistic with myself, as of two days ago, in fact, as of yesterday, I bought fuel and it was about 650 something Naira per litre. So um, if you're saying that, you know, the standard of living of Nigerians are being better, there's more money for Nigerians, I'm wondering, you know, who are the Nigerians? Because if you're looking at the common man, you know, on the streets, they really do not have enough. They do not have a lot. They do not have enough. And so 
I'm wondering how, you know, saying this, making this statement really affects them. The only way that, you know, they, their lives will be impacted is if they start to see, you know, realistic policies that would work for them. Right. If you're putting certain things in place or certain policies and reforms, um, subsidy obviously being gone made the product super expensive and only a few can actually afford it for their businesses because we need alternative power supply with the erratic current power supply that we have. So a lot of this product is being used by a lot of people and saying that, you know, it's yielding dividends. Well, we don't know. Attracting foreign investors, local investors. I know of a lot of businesses that have crumbled. I know of a lot of manufacturing, you know, businesses that have left Nigeria. So I, I, I want to know where this report is coming from. I want to see how realistic it is. And that's why I'm asking for some form of transparency. And then we know where we are as a nation. But if that's on paper saying, you know, it's yielding dividends. Well, kudos. Well done. But we need more. That's all I can say. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.